Hej, siemam kolizję, z tym razem witam was serdecznie w kolejnym odcinku z Gameplay Strayerem i zaczynamy od Scholars Made, więc nie przedłużając, skakujmy. Hmm, horrory? Jakie się pada? Nie ma jakiejś choroby, zdecydowanie. Yep. Puzzle. U, first press. U, u. Okej. Okay. Właśnie czy mamy na liście. Kolejny chororek, dobrze. Bardzo dobrze, chyba jednak się tu zapalimy sobie. Dead by Daylight X Castlevania, ludziska, tak jest. Lormo. <laughs> The Ancients. <laughs> Seek shelter. My ogień. We found the ogień. El Mamutos. Okay. Wygląda spoko gierka, bym powiedział. Destiny 2, The Final Shape. A się morka pokazuje. Nie broń. Skilla. Bo wszystko wie. The Final Shape. Jest. Man of War 2. Welcome back, Commander. Welcome back. War. War never changes. Change. But one truth is everlasting. Not even the god of the battlefield, born of thunder, shrapnel, and lightning, will see our enemies conquered. It is not the silvery wings in the sky that will bring us victory from up high. It is not the beasts of steel, crushing all under their tracks, that will decide the fate of our lands. No, for it is only the hearts and deeds of men that will bring war to its end. The only weapons that can never be broken. Only the courage of men will deliver our victory. Men like you, Commander. Men. And just some women. <laughs> pięknie, pięknie. Forgotten but unbroken. Ooh. Can you imagine what we can do with their support? How many things we can do better and faster? Mm, takie strategiczne. You lose everything. Turówka taktyczna. No. But why would they do that? Everyone minds its own business in these times. No, takie skomowe. And have your back. We've been in this difficult situation for such a long time, and look what we're doing now. Oh fuck me! 
Co? Polska pamiętliwa, ale sprawiedliwa. O! No proszę. Polska pa pamiętliwa, ale sprawiedliwa. No, no. Pięknie. Ja pochybel. Forgotten, but unbroken. Oh, come on. <laughs> and Toria, the last song. It doesn't mean to be gameplay. Ooh. In Autria, the last song is a soul's like set in a beautiful sunlit world inspired by Italian folklore where the brightest sun casts the darkest shadow. It will take you on an awe-inspiring theatrical adventure through multiple regions from the picturesque city of Quinta through the sun-soaked shores of Falegiana <laughs> in the mysterious <laughs> passageways of the Venetian-inspired Detumia, and more. Inotria comes from the name of an ancient region of southern Italy, which included the southeastern fringes of Campania, Basilicata, and Calabria, inhabited by the Inotrians. According to a common belief, Inotria comes from the Greek word for wine due to the thriving and numerous vineyards in the area. The story is inspired by Commedia dell'arte, an early form of professional theater, and many familiar characters will make an appearance. Every painting, weapon, outfit, or area can be traced to a real-world equivalent, bringing forth an unparalleled level of authenticity in representing Italy. It is more than sunshine and picturesque landscapes that separates Inotria from other games in the genre. We have made great strides in creating a highly flexible, push-forward combat, our innovative loadouts, combined with a deep RPG system, making experimentation easier than ever before, alongside greater systemic world interactions through hazards and rifts. The world has been gripped by the Canovaccio. You, maskless one, are the only one without a given role and master of your destiny. Defeat the fearsome authors that created it and free the world from stagnation by harnessing the power of Ardore. But as Ardore, you might ask, it is change manifest, the power to alter reality itself. It was first discovered by Pulcinella, who legend says wrote a song about a fictional bird that grew to such renown that he one day saw it perched atop a branch. He has now taught you how to recognize the spots where the world is susceptible to alteration, as well as how to channel the very essence of your enemies. How you wield it is up to you. The Canovaccio has brought about an age of stagnation. The world and all within it are stuck perpetually playing out their assigned roles in a script that grows ever more twisted. A world that was one lavish and beautiful now finds itself decaying inexorably, hence the term, wasted beauty. Blacksmiths pummel anvils into the earth, as farmers till soil long since dead. Not even death is an escape from this cruelest of fates. On your adventures you encounter a wide array of colorful characters, from the humble to the divine. Pochinella, your creator and mentor will join you at every step to rescue the world. Together, you will face both fresh takes on characters from Comedia dell'arte, such as Capitan Spaventa, Pantalone, Palanzone, and more, as well as old gods fallen from grace. Forsaken foes or aspiring allies, only time will tell. Do not be fooled by Anotria's dazzling landscapes and flamboyant characters, however. It is first and foremost a gameplay-driven title. We have put great effort into ensuring the title hits the mark on all the fundamentals of the genre. This begins with weapons, where we've put tremendous care to ensure they all have satisfying and varied movesets. Mighty blows come in every flavor of Carnage, with over 120 weapons across eight distinct weapon classes and countless unique and creative appearances. We strongly believe fun is at the heart of a good game, that's why we've chosen to focus on a push-forward combat approach with fast and responsive dodge rolls and quick steps. No, evidently there's just like a social and power behind. Instead, you were emboldened with our chainable parry system alongside multiple modifiers. Gone is the passive waiting for long enemy attack chains to be over. The only limit is your skill and creativity. <laughs> To reward relentless players who can masterfully chain together actions, we've created the unraveling system. 
It is a special status that can be built up by chaining offensive actions on enemies and if filled will bring them to their knees. Once an enemy has been unraveled, a powerful repost attack can be executed. Doing so grants you the awakened state, a powerful temporary buff that can be modified by your gear and emboldens you to jump straight into the next fight. Beneath this solid base layer, however, we've introduced a plethora of new RPG mechanics that we believe will dramatically change how players approach encounters. A key focus of Enotrian is making build experimentation more fun, accessible, and convenient. As hardcore players, we know that it can be one of the most rewarding experiences. However, it is sadly usually burdened by respec, unreliability, and is such done using guides on repeat playthroughs or only by the hardcore. In Enotria, you don't have to wait to have fun. With our systems, you can have your safe build right alongside your experimental one for the very first time in the genre. Loadouts are full builds consisting of masks, weapons, perks, mm. aspects, gems, items, and lines, all on a single screen. They are our proudest achievement, opening up theory crafting of builds to everyone rather than only to the hardcore. The single screen and foolproof design means that anyone can conceptualize and come up with their own builds quickly and easily. <laughs> masks are powerful items dropped by enemies in an Autrin. There are over 30 masks that have their own combat effects and perk slots, changing not only spoko, how play, to może spoko, how look być with aesthetic an element. as well as narrative implications. Lines are our answer to spell casting. We wanted to avoid playstyles that focus on passively slinging magic from afar while retaining the power of fantasy. This is why every single loadout can have up to four to lines and magical abilities Souls of Elden Ring. <laughs> the passive foundation for your character's growth and experimentation are the statistics that you can raise. While many of them are familiar, such as health, stamina, or damage, there are some new approaches taken in the Notrian. First, damage is governed by separate stackable stats. Ones affecting raw damage, or door damage, as well as elemental. Fajnie pokazuje, które statystyki czego dotyczą. This way, each virtue can raise your survivability, meaning the players no longer have to choose between safe statistics such as health and stamina and fun ones such as elemental damage or luck. So you choose the virtue that improves your playstyle best and unleash your creativity. Spokojnie wygląda. Another key feature and item in Enotria. They allow you to channel the essence of particular foes. In practical terms, each loadout can have an aspect assigned, which can dramatically alter your statistics. This means that regardless of your stat distribution, through aspects you can experiment with new equipment, say a sword that you otherwise couldn't equip, and enables even greater diversity and specialization with loadouts. Gems are items that govern our parry ability. As we want to encourage a push-forward style of combat, we have made sure that the parry is responsive, chainable, and potent. However, we are aware that parrying is not everyone's preferred playstyle. That's why gems exist, allowing you to make the parry easier or harder and to change what it's best at in each loadout. Want a less potent but easier parry? Go ahead. Want to parry spells rather than physical blows? We have it covered. This system is another way that we are enabling players to choose their own comfort level and preference and experiment with value. Oh, czyli jako możliwość dają. Spoko. Że jak ktoś chce, to używa, jak ktoś nie chce, to nie używa. Allows you to Że unlock new perks slaughtered into masks to Git? mix and match as you please. Never again feel like you can't get a little bit of 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 a of Completing entire sets of entries will give additional rewards that might surprise you. Further rewarding exploration. We've now described what loadouts are and all the things you can do with them. However, where the system really Bra, the mini trochę? elites and mini bosses that lurk within optional oh. paths and secret chambers. While well, Altria is a gameplay-centered title, we Quest. still put significant effort in ensuring we have an exciting and nuanced story that each player can engage with at their own pace. The main story of the game has been designed to be more straightforward, ensuring those that want to focus on it can march onwards to the final fight without frustration. Straightforward does not mean basic, however. You will meet many colorful characters, and Puccinella himself is a systemic and reactive who will often have a word or two of encouragement or mockery, depending on your actions. Should you wish to delve 
deeper, however. There are a multitude of sites, NPCs, along with four old gods that you can find and recruit to the game's hub. Each god provides their own storyline and related quests. Complete all of the optional quests mm -hmm. in Anotria, and perhaps you'll find that things are not as simple as you might have thought. The main story, alongside the optional content, culminates in multiple endings, based on the player's choices oh. and the content they have found and completed. It's now open, and you can choose the version that best suits you, be it standard or deluxe. Pre-ordering also comes with its own set of incentives that you can check out at our website or in related stores. Mm, the 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 is also targeting a rewarding game experience with over 40 hours of playtime during a normal main story path. We're also very proud to announce our demo that will be available from the 22nd of May to the 30th of July on PS5 and PC. Oh, and demo! Store. Also aware yeah. that typically demos are not comprehensive and representative of the final product, so we decided to give more space to our uniqueness and intentions with the content of the game. This is why Spoko. the demo contains 27 enemies, including variants, two mini bosses, one boss, one boss okay. 22 weapons, three gauntlet gems, six masks, 32 perks, seven aspects, over 28 consumables, be upgrade gear, as well as 18 lines. Unlike other demos, we wanted to give a deeper experience to our players. So we hope you will appreciate our demo's longevity, which currently stands at about 8 hours of gameplay to fully complete it. Oh, czyli demo jest na 8 godzin? Wow. Wow, bym powiedział, nieźle. Supernatural. Le Hororo. Oh, shit. Where are you? Okay, this fucking time. Oh shit. Jest tu coś gryzie. Boom! Dark Envoy, director cast. Spectacular horse shit. So, now as we run out of budget anyway, we can show you our game itself, rather than richly voiced over CGI's. Here you can see the good guys, handsome looking humans with weapons, quite badassy if you ask me. Here Ooh. we have the shadowy evil characters. Ugly, sinister, and mean. Robots? We love robots! Different sizes and offensive capabilities. Yeah. Combat is quite sweet in general, but it's the slow-mo that makes it great. And yes, everybody is fighting currently on the planet Jean. <laughs> some using wild tech, some using truly crazy mana powers. Explosions, flamethrower cuties, and lots of creepy enemies to dominate in a perfectly set up combat. A true real time slow mo. Slow mo, classic. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a decently sized RPG with meaningful choices, different classes, skills, spells, great battles, bosses, enchantable craftable weapons, and all the usual stuff. But better. Like, you need two weeks, not a year, to play our game. Yeah, I play Dark Envoy a lot. Because it is fun! My gal says, uh, duh, duh, but I'm sure she's overreacting. Like, trust me, I'm the video game developer. There's 13 of us here in the dungeon. Everybody agrees, it is safe. No worries! Help us spread the news. Share it! 
Share it, I guess. Assassin's Creed Shadows. Oh. Nothing of the sea. The oceans fill with new ships, but they all come from the same river. Greed. Power. Knowledge. Vengeance. Vengeance too. Oh, don't move that And you, will you continue down that river? Or choose another path beyond what we see? And we must look for it together. Czyli będziemy mieli dwie postacie. We must learn to trust. Rebuild. And follow the blade. Wielki jest ten ziomek, ja pierdzielę. Piętnastego listopada. Pięknie. Pięknie, pięknie. With our dual protagonists, we have two fantasies, the samurai and the shinobi. We want the player to experience both, and we cannot squeeze both fantasies into one character because uh, samurai and shinobi came from a different social class. They have different lives, so we cannot really uh, mix uh, them together. The historical character of Yasuke presented a really exciting opportunity for the narrative team. We approached it in the same way that uh, so much of the work is done in Assassin's Creed, which is really in terms of research and history first. Not a lot is known about him, but what we did know, or we do know, is that he arrived in Japan in 1579, right when our game starts and that he had relationships with some of the most interesting people in our setting, like Oda Nobunaga, the Portuguese and Jesuits, which made it very sort of tantalizing and enticing from a narrative perspective to come in and, and start weaving these facts with story in between. The more we read about the character, 
the more he was inspiring for us. He's a foreigner discovering Japan and we, we thought it's the perfect fit because he's discovering Japan and you are discovering Japan also. And on the flip side, we have Nawe who comes uh, from the province of Iga, which is a, a remote uh, mountainous area, fiercely independent, uh, known as the birthplace of Shinobi. So they're very contrasting perspectives that really expose a lot of different sides uh, and facets of the era. When Oda came, uh, he completely destroyed Iga. We have Yasuke and Oda that coming to destroy the Shinobi. So it can kind of create this this interesting tension between two characters. We were able to connect her to uh, the province of Iga and the legendary Igan Shinobi historical figure, Fujibayashi Nagato, who's her, who's her father in the game. So we understand why she is, has the skills that she has and the values that she learns from her father in the people of Iga, which are valor, benevolence, and, and wisdom. And as a young person still at the start of the game, we get to see now we acquire even more of that wisdom as the story unfolds. And if you ask anybody, it's super clear that samurai will be combat heavy and a shinobi will be stealth heavy. It creates this distinction right away. Yasuke uh, can fight with all his advantage, uh, his stature, like he's, he's a big guy. He can break door, he can fight multiple enemies, he can break armor compared to now we, like her character and their, their outfit, it's, it's really about being stealth, being unseen. She's the only one with the Eden Blade, so they have clear advantage that put them into the, the stealth and the combat, even if they can do a, a bit of both. They're a really great pair together because on one side, uh, we have Nawe, who's very intense and passionate and, and determined woman who is very set on her goals. She's kind of got her heart on her sleeve and she'll say what she feels in the heat of the moment. And this intensity uh, that she brings as a shinobi, but that she also brings to her relationship. And this balances very well with Yatsuke, who is sort of a, a thoughtful level head to Nawe's fiery passion. We really thought about somebody like Yasuke, historically, who was able to come to Japan and have the life that he did there to enter service for Oda Nobunaga and achieve all of the things that he did. Like, what kind of person would go through all of this? So our Yasuke is very uh, intelligent, thoughtful, and respectful of this culture that he encounters. And that makes him a very nice sort of counterpart to Nawe. He's a bit mysterious as well, and that's something we get to see unfold as the game progresses. Nice. Pięknie. Oj, nie zapowiada się Kristo, bym powiedział. Kristo. Poczekamy. Apex Legends. A time device should get me back to my boy, but something's bloody missing. You need to take a break. We've been at this for days. I mean, we know how badly you want him back after. Well. But, you know, Leviathan in the room here. Are we sure going back in time is even possible? <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean. Hey, cool beaker! Is this glass or why do they call them beakers? These blackouts keep coming up. Never get in. Deities, are you good? Where did?
Now there's the Mary Summers I'm looking for. I'm not your enemy, Doctor. Newton needs you. What? You want to make that thing work? I have what you need. Go home to him, Doctor Summers. We gotta move! If you want it, you know where to find me. Newton. Okay. Właśnie nazywa dobre story. Gridfall 2, The Dying World. Where this? Donegada. Yes, quite. In Samal Donegada. Ah, yes, do it. Sak Swiss, Billy Casa. Is Bradai, Donegada, Oberman, Amas, Suksu. Davarasa. Oh, sorry. Diablo 4 The Battle Pass Rewards Reborn. Pięknie. High on life. Jim 
Close combat. O Jezus Maria. Ach, te czasy, nie? Ale, winning medic. Close combat 2, a bridge too far. No, upgrade kurde UI. Ale upgrade graficzny też jest. Close combat to the Russian front. Kolejny upgrade UI. There's no lucky lifting graphics. Close combat 4, the battle of the bridge. Is this an upgrade? Let's see. I'm afraid that we're going to get a little bit lost here. If you look at the UI, the fourth one. Graph is happy as that. Close combat pinch. Invasion Normandy. Launch the greatest amphibious invasion in the history of the world. The target is Normandy, France. Area secure. Nine divisions of assault troops plus support from naval gunfire and massive airstrikes deliver the mighty blow. Now, the Allied forces will turn southward to the liberation of France and Liberation for the Liberation. Hellblade 2, Sinua Saga. Czekamy. Wtoreczek. Senua. The outcast who became a warrior. Who faced her demons and challenged the gods for her lover's soul. Has accepted the voices, the furies, as part of herself. Just like her mother, Galena, she was not like other people. She saw and heard the world differently. Her father, Zinbel, told her she was evil, tainted by the sin of her mother. Tormented and afraid, she retreated from the world. Until love broke through like the rays of a new dawn. In Dillian's acceptance, she could live again. He gave light to her mind and freed a warrior from her body. But the voice of her father stayed with her, reminding her of her curse. And when the plague came to her land, the people blamed Senua. She took her darkness with her, banishing herself to the wilds. So she was not there when the Northmen massacred her people and sacrificed Dillion to the god of hell. <gasps> Dillion! Senua's torment was so deep that the world around her fell away. 
She took the head of her beloved, the vessel of his soul, and vowed to go to hell herself to save him. Through mischievous horrors, she fought to find the secret path that would lead her to the very gates of hell. But the way was marked by fire and illusion. Senua had to fight the gods that guarded these paths and stave off the rot which threatened to consume her mind and end her life. Only conquest could open the gates. Only blood would bring her face to face with Hela. Face to face with defeat. Once again, Senua was engulfed in darkness, lost in a maze of misery and confusion. Until Dillian's voice led her to the promise of victory. A sword that could kill a god. To win the sword, Senua would drown in her darkest memories, pulling at the shards lodged in flesh, mind and soul. She pressed deeper into the underworld, resisting its grasping hands and deafening cries until she found her prize before the guardian of hell's gates. Senua released her rage, a fury that could not be stopped, not by savage jaws, not by waves of warriors, not by the pull of death itself. In defeat and desperation, Senua begged for her beloved's release. But a sacrifice must be made, and burdens cast away. Senua's fate was never in the hands of the gods, but in her own. Yep. So true. Only she could choose, out of love, to live, to go on, and to take us with her. Play it day one with Game Pass. With Game Pass. Die by the blade. I have nothing to say to rebels and outlaws. Ooh. You're going down. Citizen. You're stupid. I grow tired of all this shit. Ooh. Indica. A heroine like no other. Oh, we've seen so many games featuring orthodox nuns. Indica is just another one. Patient and humble to a fault. Do you think that her adventures after leaving the monastery could be entertaining in some way? I sincerely think not. Why would someone want to play Indica? Is a game about a nun that fascinating? 
All those themes of self-discovery, religion, breaking the authority. I mean, who does that anymore? An unconventional friend. A nun talking to the devil, you say? <laughs> Is that even possible? Indica spends her time praying. She has no time for <laughs> sinful thoughts. Would she even dare to speak with evil incarnate? <laughs> Doubtful if you ask me. The alternative 19th century Russia. Tolstoy and Dostoyevsky must be turning in their graves. Can you tell a meaningful story in such a bizarre setting? Just look at it. The architecture, the atmosphere. Abomination is the kindest word I can find. <coughs> a gallery of weird characters. Indica is on a mission from God. Do you think she has time to stop by and make new acquaintances? Anyway, I'm quite sure that the people she meets are helpful and respectful. Even animals love Indica. Quiet, quiet little doggy. A dark sense of humor. But that's exactly what people need. Something dark and twisted when their lives are as miserable as they are. Let's play something fun, colorful. Besides, when was the last time the dark sense of humor in a video game was actually dark? Reflection on authority. Okay. You may wonder what this game is about. Bring some water. Authority is not interesting enough to be concerned about. Just do what they told you, no questions asked. Come on. Chop chop. Chop chop. Explore. So Od razu jaśnie się zrobiło. Jak popadało. Zobaczmy jak gasimy sobie światełko. And bizarre world to uncover. If I got a kopejka for every time someone said that to me, I'd be a millionaire. Mm, a billionaire. Hard to solve, can they? A complex faith system. Oh, finally. Faith system. So you're saying that Indica gains faith points through her deeds. Marvelous. But this should be popular, especially among young people. <laughs> I do wonder what these points give you. I hope it's nothing sinful. An unconventional soundtrack. Oh, if you make something that's set in 19th century Russia, at least the music should fit. Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff. Seva, he's a guitarist. If they don't use at least one of their scores... Oh, oh, listen. Do you hear that? Dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Visuals that will make your eyes pop. I'm sorry, did I miss something? We were talking about Indica. Wasn't this supposed to be a 3D third person game? Oh, I clearly missed one D here, if you know what I mean. What kind of stuff? I watch Doki Doki play through. I'm no longer scared. <laughs> we will see that. Heavens, this is one hell of a strange game. No, Indica is just not here. But maybe he's just not so. Ghost of Tsushima, director's cut. Chop chop. A cinematic masterpiece. This island of my life. Could have been my PSN. Kills our samurai. I can't let more of my people die. I need every weapon we have. Tsushima can't afford anything less. The Mongols have changed you, young master. 
the, the young master has changed. Sometimes our only choice is to walk away from everything we know. Masterpiece in modern games, yeah. They occur from time to time. I sacrificed. There is not much of masterpieces. Yeah. And I would do it again. It could happen. <laughs> Destiny 2. The final shape. Oh, microcosm? Co to za broń? Oh, shit. It's a laser beam. Masterpiece is Jagged Alliance too. I have never seen a better game. <laughs> yeah. Pokemon Unite! Yeah! <laughs> well, for me, um, the heroes of Mighty Magic 3 can be a masterpiece too. And yeah. It depends. It depends. On the tastes. Of the individ individual. Czekajcie, czy my w tych Pokemonach mamy ten? Mm. Takich bardziej grubsz grubsze postacie mamy? Czy nie mamy nic? Pokazali. <laughs> Hello Kitty Island Adventure! Yay! <laughs> Uh, tried a hero tree, not my type. I'm not into mag um, magic and fantasy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some games are um, not for everyone. That's why we have so wide uh, of game gen genre. So yeah, everyone can pick their own capes. Meet Time Ooh. for some shock and awe. A promising football prospect in college until his powers manifested and he was captured and experimented on. Weathervane controls the destructive might of the storm. Hit multiple enemies with chain lightning or use powerful winds to throw them around. <laughs> Weathervane provides literal tailwinds to his allies, enhancing their abilities with improved knockback. Rebound! Push him around! Use facet and kinetics help to amplify chain lightning and hit even more enemies at once. Weather rain, combine our powers. Or enhance your gust of wind with fire and crystal debris. Mm. Weather rain, let's collab. Build charge with lightning abilities and unleash a devastating storm. A devastating storm. No one escapes the storm. Tame the turbulent forces of nature with weather rain. The caves. Put me in, coach. Undisputed. The best of the best. <laughs> you think you're ready, huh? We go with the battle you've all been waiting for. We just get it started. We just get it started. You don't really want it. You don't really want it. It's time. Oh my word, what a shot! World of Warcraft, Mist of Pandaria.
wield until uh, unlimited power unlimited power yeah okay it's classic hey, but again Remix, ooh. Proszę. Dungeon Fighter Online. Ta gigantyczna ilość pasków, nie? Masakra. Ile? <laughs> 833 tysiące pasków życia? Holy Jesus. Pięknie, pięknie. Killing Floor 3. 15 rocznica. The Killing Floor franchise for us has always been about that power fantasy. The feeling that it's almost out of your control. And sometimes it's completely out of your control and turns into complete mayhem. I've been making Killing Floor since the beginning. We didn't really have like official titles. I did a lot of initial game mode prototyping and just anything to get the game up and running. The original Killing Floor we did with, I think we were 12 or 15 people. Killing Floor 1 was a very grindhouse, dark, gritty survival horror. Back in the day, having access to enough people and enough talent to make what you want wasn't there. We had like three months, maybe four months. There wasn't a lot of polished UI and matchmaking and stuff like that. It was, you know, Leland, you have a week to take each one of these maps and change as much as you possibly can, right? It was, David, you have a day to make each enemy. Bill, you have a day to animate each enemy. So it was do or die to get that first game done. A couple of weeks before we were due to release, Bill and Dave with their art hats on, got the four of us in a room and went, it's got to look better than this. And I was, guys, we've maxed out the credit cards. The bank account has one payroll left in it, and that goes out on Friday. There's nowhere else to go. And we released the game, and people loved it. We went, holy shit. It worked. It was a really fun time. It was a very intense deadline. We were much younger. You know, we were all in our 20s at that time, so we had a lot more energy to do that. Killing Floor 2, we got to step it up a bit. I think we were at about 45, 50 people at that point. David Hensley was the creative director on the project. I was heavily involved in the animation and all the little details that we didn't feel other first-person shooters at that time had. Killing Floor 2 went more of a polished science horror vibe. There's much more weapons and classes. You actually have modern server infrastructure with matchmaking. We had perks, and each one of those perks would have different bonuses for different types of weapons, certain different ways to play. The enemies move faster, the difficulty is more intense. It's its own thing. Well, that was our first real tilt at the consoles as well. Ale wybierz, mm -mm -mm. I've been a fan of Killing Floor for quite some time. I was working on another game. One of the other character artists says, there's a game I want to try with you guys. And I was like, all right, like I'm down. I like monsters. So during crunch, that artist would be like, you're from Georgia, right? Wouldn't it be crazy if you worked on that one day? So that was my introduction. One of my thoughts when I was given the opportunity to lead the team is that Killing Floor was a bit of a cult hit. I know I wanted it to return to this level of horror have some cult elements but become a little more mainstream so we'd be in the office and we'd be working on dry erase boards and it was just basically dave hensley and i kind of talking about what the game could be 
And then COVID hit and I was like, we're gonna work remote. So all of a sudden there wasn't just like Atlanta, Roswell as this hub for it. And we could open the floodgates to people that wanted to be a part of the team. I was on the team leading the design for Maneater DLC. And that took about a year. And then I came onto the prototype for Killing Floor 3. You get to start with an idea, make something a reality, and then play it. Say, hey, do we want to iterate on this more, or do we want to try something different? It's just about finding what's fun, what works. Really set it up to when we moved into production, we knew, for the most part, what we wanted to make and how were we going to make it. Everything's gray box. Just the simplest possible representation of each thing, except gun sights. That has to be accurate. Within a week, I had a pretty strong idea of what the teaser trailer would look like when we first announced. It was still feeling like a Killing Floor title, while at the same time elevating it. I think Tripwire's definitely the house that Killing Floor built at this point. There were fun things about the scrappier days. I think as we've grown, we've kept the heart of what makes Tripwire special while also becoming more professional, having access to better technology and more skilled employees. It's been 10 years. Let's step the game right up um, and give people some new challenges. Oof. Nice. Mix Defiant od Ubisoft, z tego co kojarzę. Hot, 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 hot. No, jak wyjdzie, to pewnie sobie też obadamy, nie? Jak się w ogóle gra? Pięknie, pięknie, pięknie i to ludziska by było na tyle, jeśli chodzi o dzisiejszy odcinek. Dzięki wielkie jak zwykle za oglądanie i widzimy się już niedługo w kolejnych.